G'day guys, my name's Pete from ETR Music and I'm, I'm lucky enough to have Pete Drummond here with me. He's, uh, he's in Adelaide, we're at the Gov right now and he's playing with a band you may have heard of called Dragon. We're just going to have a bit of a chat and sit back and, and enjoy. So, Pete, very quickly, very simple, simple starting questions. What's your favourite movie? Um, I would say, at the moment, Fargo. Fargo, okay. The yeah. Coen Brothers. Right, okay. Yeah. Nice, very cool. Um, What's your favourite subject at school? Uh, music. Music, yeah, okay. Any other than music? Was there art? Was the other yeah, thing yeah, that yeah, I cool. liked. Does that mean you failed everything else? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, nice. Well, but I was, I um, actually got into Art Express, which is like the, the you know, they have that, that thing in New South Wales where they, whatever the best works are, get displayed in the gallery. Yeah. And so I kind of faked my way into that. Did right? Yeah, yeah. Ah, good. That saved me from failing. Everything else. <laughs> so you've got the diploma of all sorts. Art and music, it was fine. Good, man. Good, good. All right. So, you know, getting into the new degrees a little bit now. When did you start playing and at what point did you realise drums were for you? Okay. Um, I mean, that's, my old man's been a musician, right. so, right, so I started kind of playing the drums when I was about four. And so I got a kit for Christmas. Yeah. But it was because. I was playing on buckets and, you know, I remember having this little toy drum that had these kind of, um, I don't know, like these leathery sort of heads when I was, I, I don't know, I must have been a toddler. Nice. Just Real that. Yeah, whatever, you know. And my mum always said she used to put, you know, like laundry in buckets. And I remember, I actually have a weird kind of recollection of the smell of the bleach of going out to the laundry and emptying all the yeah. stuff out. And the clothes and over the back lawn. That's it, and then just putting the buckets out and playing. Nice. So, it was, I don't know, I think that's both questions really, because yeah. for as long as I can remember being on the planet. Yeah, that's right. all I yeah. wanted to well, do. That's cool, man, that's good, that's good. Um, so who were, or are your music um, education educators? As oh, okay. Um, well, I think early on, like my father was always, you know, really helpful at getting me and my brother and we had kind of a little band and stuff and so he was always really good at getting us to Your brother play. played? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, he used to, he played guitar. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and, uh, it's, so I think there was that thing that we always were playing and we always had, we were learning repertoire and, yeah. you know, doing little gigs around the place. And you were always on the drums at that point? Yeah, yeah, and I was so, singing lead vocals. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. This thing's come a long yeah. way. No, I, I don't know how bad you were back then, um, but I've, I've listened to a lot of the current stuff you've done and seen your show tonight. I've seen it before. And your singing is it's amazing. Oh, you've done well. Yeah, well, I, I mean, it's inspired me to want to learn how to actually sing after the play. Should we do it? I, I um, it's just something I've always been through. And I, um, yeah, so I mean, there was that kind of culture in the house. And early on, my uncle used to play drums, so he showed me. I remember just the first basic rock things I showed me. Then I went and had lessons with one guy, um, his name is Jess Zappia, and he I actually ended up marrying his daughter. So right. He's now my okay. father. Wow, what an influence. So, yeah, that's right. <laughs> You're so, awesome, you can marry your daughter. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Oh, no, right. right. <laughs> but, um, but so, I mean, it was just Jess kind of taught me all of the foundation type of stuff. And then once I got to high school, I just started watching instructional videos. Yeah. Cool. Who was your favourite instructional video you kind of I had this one video that um, had a compilation of guys, and it had Weppel, uh, the next, uh, Back to Basics actually yeah. was on that, yeah. and had Virgil's first video, right. which is wow. the double bass drums. Thing. Yeah, yeah. when he was like, yeah, yeah, three yeah. months old. The, the, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that Frank did. And he actually he plays banana peels on yeah. that thing from yeah. way back then. Yeah. Slowly, but you know. Right. And uh, it also had uh, Terry Bozio, yeah. his first solo drum so, thing. That's with the big tint yeah, yeah. the hair bigger than his yeah, drum right. Yeah, I've got the, the black, same one. The black colour yes. yeah. yeah. And, and the, the black tires. heads. All the ebony heads. Yeah. Yeah, they, they look like, uh, I thought they were like uh, bike tie rims. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I did the same. You know, I had boom stands and string and bike tie rims. And it <laughs> didn't work. I <laughs> just needed a mother. All the spokes. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. And I think the other guy that was on that video was Steve Smith. Wow. His first video where he's like, 
Yeah. Dark yeah. glasses. Yeah. yeah. Wow, man. Yeah. That's cool. So, so I just kind of ate that thing yeah. up. Yeah. And just learned as much as I could from it. Just, yeah. Just trying to mimic. Did you mimic yeah. someone? Did you yeah, like... just wore the tape yeah. out, just yeah. looking at that stuff. And I think, like, it was really difficult because it was such old school technology. Yeah. Of trying to go frame by frame. Yeah. Pause. Where's his hand? Yeah. His Where, hand. Oh, what is What's that the technique? Why is his thumb off yeah. the side? Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, I really loved Weckles playing. And then, I think I, I don't know, for whatever reason, I got into Virgil's playing. Yeah. I think because I'd, I'd started listening to like, Slayer and Metallica and, right. and, and then I heard that loose change record. How does Slayer and Metallica convert to a record, uh, to a Weckl? Yeah, yeah, I know. Sorry, no, Virgil. I I think it was just a double bass drum thing. Okay, I mean, like, it's kind of long-winded, but it was that classic thing of, like, I'd started high school, and uh, I was in year seven, and there was a guy who was in year nine, and we used to talk about drums. And so we'd kind of throw challenges at each other all the time. Drum off. Yeah, exactly. And he'd be like, if you heard this thing, you know, can you play this thing, whatever. And so he used to bring things and uh, play me like an excerpt or something and then say, you know, That's you know see how you go with this. And so then I'd take it home and kind of, you know, push myself to work on it. Just to and be better at it than he was. Yeah, and so likewise. You said it was competition. It's healthy competition. Yeah. It's testosterone, yeah. you know? <laughs> Young men. And what's he doing these days? I don't know. He plays <laughs> yeah. he's, he's, he's probably got a proper job. Yeah, yeah. Um, Loving it. But he brought that loose change record. Right. And he said, all right, okay, check this out. He said, if you could, if you could play any of this by tomorrow, I'll think you're incredible. Yeah. And sure enough, I took it home and I was yeah. like, yeah, so work it out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah cool. You know, I didn't really... I, I think I might have got a bit of slave. So, okay. All right. so apart from drums, of course, um, I know you play a little bit of keys. Yeah, Is yeah. there anything else that you play? Well, a lot of keys. Yeah. Um, well, I had piano lessons, and then I just... I kind of would just pick up an instrument that's lying around and try and get something out of it. Like a guitar, guitar yeah. melodica, mandolin, uh, my daughter got a violin recently, so I'm looking at some that. How's that going? Oh, it's, I'm bad. Yeah, how's she know, going? She's better than me. Yeah, good. She plays drums, actually. She's really good. Nice. Yeah, she she loves it. Yeah, you will be. No, um, and, um, yeah, I don't know. So I kind of, I just love tinkering. Yeah. And the soundtrack stuff is good for that. So generally, when I'm writing a soundtrack, it's soundtrack for? For documentaries, okay. which I generally, like, I do quite a lot of. If I need a particular instrument yep. or something, I'll, yep. yeah, well, you don't pay something, do it. That's right. It's not enough budget, yep. but also it's kind of a thing where I, I will just find one and then try and get enough of the noise out of it. Yep. Okay. So there was like a clarinet laying around in our house when I was a kid, and, and a book. Yep. And so book. I just the thing, if I push this, it makes that sound. That's right. The, the book says do this. So, so when you're doing these. Um, uh, Albums and documentary, yeah. you're playing with the live instruments on Yeah, yeah, yeah right. definitely. Right. So it's a mix of live instrumentation and using sample libraries. The, or- the kind of full on orchestral film scoring side of it is mostly sample libraries. Yeah. Because, yeah. Because yeah. it's not the yeah. that's just the way it is. No, no. Well, yeah, I mean, you're still writing the stuff the same way as yeah. you would if an orchestra was playing. Yeah. You can put an orchestra in your garage band project or project. Yeah. It can be our kit. Yeah. So you got to know that it's out of key. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 nice. Yeah. So. Very good. All right, so drums obviously are, are fine. Um, but outside of drumming and music in general, is there something that floats your boat? Is there, is there something else that you would do as a hobby? No. No. No, I mean, my kids, that's yeah. it. Whatever they're doing. Well, they're my family, family yeah. and that's it, really. So cool. it's kind of music, my family. Yeah. So another question I'm going to ask is, so you tour quite a bit on the road a bit. How is the communication at home? Is it when you're home, you're home? You know, when you're out, they understand you've got a job and you've got to go do it? Well, I think the thing is that I am lucky, like so lucky because my wife, you know, like I said, her dad was my drum teacher. So yeah. she's grown up in that culture of yeah. having, you know, seeing it. Yeah, and so having that culture of understanding that 
done a proper job and things are random and everything is under no other life. Yeah. Yeah. And so she knows that. But I think it drives us both a little crazy. Um, but the good thing about this band and the way things kind of work in general is we tend to be away on weekends. There's not a lot of big moments. Mm -hmm. right. And that works really well. So you're home for a bulk time. Yeah. So, so I'm home most best. of the week and then I'm away yeah. weekends. It's way better than working the nights. Oh, yeah. 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 Alright, so who was your um, uh, what? So what was your your most favourite drumming up to date? Your most favourite drumming experience? Oh, okay. Um, Gee, that's hard. That's a hard question. I don't know. I mean, it's whatever gig I did recently. Honestly, today it's last night. Right. Okay. Because I every time I play is an opportunity to be in that moment and create something in that moment. So last night I did a jazz gig and that was like so rewarding. Nice. You know, just yeah, challenge and musical. So I've seen you play jazz at the, 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 the hat trick. Yeah, yeah. You know, and you pull that out and it's, yeah. it's amazing. It's, well, I love it, you know, and I think that probably more than anything else that I've been working on in the last probably five or six years, whenever I sit down and practice, it's always in that moment. Right. I just play on my little big rock kit at home, yeah. and you know, and I just like I love Bill Stewart, yeah, like crazy. crazy. So I've just been trying to get my head around what that is, and you know, what he's doing. Yeah. yeah, and just I mean, it, it began a long time ago, just trying to understand Billy Joe Jones and and that kind of and Jimmy Cobb and that sort of time playing that sort of phrase, yeah. and then gradually just you know I, I don't know I think. For whatever reason, I fell in love with Stuart's playing because it feels so funky all the time. Even though it's swinging, it's yeah. like it's the deepest, funkiest. And thing. it's the way the kids tune. Oh yeah, so yeah. it's, it's all out of tune. So it's yeah, tune. It's ridiculously good. It's, yeah. 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 It's, so that for me, that's kind of the mecca. Yeah. So your your favorite drumming experience was obviously every gig you played. Yeah. You know that's good. Is there a, what's the worst one? Like, can you think of somewhere you've played and it's like, oh my god, that was the worst gig I've ever done. Look, Why was it that bad? Yeah, look, I think, honestly, it, there are times when I have to do... I don't know, I, I think it's when other people's hearts are not yeah. You know, that, that upsets me. Because you... I come at it from a place of just wanting to make whatever the situation is as great as it can be. And yeah. so if you've got other players who are not necessarily good players, good or bad, you know, in some sort of judgment. Got to give it it but yeah, like if if everyone's connecting and and you know focusing their attention and their energy into creating whatever that moment is yeah. in the best possible way they're happy. And if people are like don't give a rat's ass then yeah. Yeah. it brings everyone down and that's that's a that can be poison in a in a touring situation. Yeah, or even just on a casual gig, you know? Yeah. Even if it's a, like a wedding gig, yeah. it doesn't matter. I, like, I will try and make it the best it can possibly be. Yeah. I will give everything I have today. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's awesome. And, you know, the, what advice can you give to young players or any musician on how to be a good band member? Because you don't want to be around that person. If you have the opportunity to not book them to your band, yeah. Why would you want to book someone for your band? What's a good band member? Um, I think, like obviously there's the there's the functional side of it, like being able to play yeah. and being able to play the repertoire and like be good at your instrument. You know, like so if you're a drummer, having good time and playing simply yeah. and not you know overplaying all that kind of stuff. Drummer plays on exactly. Yeah. So all that stuff aside, the other thing is just being a decent human being. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Being someone wanting to come up for interviews. And, yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, but, you know, just being somebody that, you know, doesn't have a massive ego and and can blend in as part of a group of people and cool. 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 find your way. Right. Nice, man. That's cool. Um, dead or alive, who is the one person you'd love to spend a day with? Musically or inspirational? Um... At the moment, I'm just thinking John Schofield. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, and then the other cat for me would be um, James Horner, who's like a film composer. Yeah. Oh, so, you know, yeah. it's just a couple of guys with Brandon, yeah. and what would you talk about? Um, Did you pick their brains on a particular topic? Or I think, I mean, cool? yeah, I, I, from the point of view of the film score stuff, I would just really love to be be kind of a fly on the wall to watch James Horner's process. Um, and probably the same thing with John Schofield, like, just to, I don't know, just bask in the genius that yeah, he's just in the studio while he's doing his kind of be you know, yeah, okay. somewhere in there. Yeah, all right, good, good. So what's next? What, what other things are you doing? So obviously you drums, there's many bands, and you just spoke about being in a jazz trio. Yeah. What else is there? What can you think? Five years, ten years on? Um, I mean, honestly, like in, in Australia, I think just being able to make a living and and keep playing music and not being, and you know, having been fortunate enough to not have to do anything else, that is enough. That's, that's, a win. <laughs> that's, a, that's yeah. enough. You know? yeah. So being able to continue that is always the goal. Um, from a creative point of view, um, I'm really happy doing the soundtrack work. I love doing it. So it'd be great to move maybe more into doing some short films and, and hopefully getting to do some film scores. Okay. And then from the drumming point of view, like playing as much music as I possibly can and always, uh, and a diversity of music, you know? Like I love that I'm playing a lot of country records and then doing these jazz things and then obviously doing the band all the time and then random things in between. Um, there's this new trio that I'm just, we're just starting, you know, it's really literally the very first steps of that and I'm so excited to see where that goes because it, it's given me an opportunity to think about really exploding, yeah. creating again yeah, yeah, yeah. on the drums. You know. oh, and you're obviously playing the recording and touring. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. You know, but at the moment we're just we've got a date to go hang out at one of our houses and just play it. And then see what happens. Record everything you play? Yeah, yeah. Very in some sense. I've got two last questions for you and they're big questions. Uh, so what are your thoughts on social media musicians? You know, obviously you know do, do you think it's easier to get music out now? Or it's it's so easy that everybody's doing it watering down the actual talent? Oh, I see what you're saying. Um look I think It's a hard thing because it, you can lament the change, you know, like you can actually think, and, and I have at times thought, you know, what's happening, the record industry's died, you know, like, and, and budgets have gone down, and there's less session work than there ever was, all that kind of because stuff. People can play with themselves. Yeah, that's right, exactly. But I think that now I kind of embrace the whole culture where somebody in their bedroom, like you look at that guy, Cooper drum, like that. that. That's a perfect example of just a guy, a kid who's passionate about playing drums and plays along with songs. Yes. And then he's ended up in a situation where, you know, he has endorsements and he has a profile and, you know, and he's doing his own thing and he's expressing himself on the drums. I think that's completely valid. Yeah. yeah and, and, um, and, and so I kind of, I like the fact that, um, can really, whatever you are from whatever corner of the globe, from whatever socio-economic um, status that you come from, you can just post something and put it out there. And the, the good thing about that is, generally speaking, if you take the farms out of the equation, right. you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that whole yeah. thing, the cream will generally rise to the top. You know, so the guys with the most views on YouTube are generally the guys that have put a lot of time and effort into it. Sorry, there's a friend of mine on Facebook. And just a simple fun one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, then there's a friend of mine on Facebook who is, who's now got half a million views from a Meshuggah cover. Right. And man, look, the hours that it would have taken him just to develop the double bass drum chops to do that. Right. And then to put that together and yeah. practice it and then edit it together yeah. and then post it and promote it. And, you know, I think it's completely valid. Okay, cool. Cool. Yeah, it's very mixed, you know, the questions that I've asked. I've asked that same question to other people. And 
It's a very, it's a mixed answer. Yeah, but yeah. I, you know, they can go away because I'm a professional and I need to, you know, yeah. rise above it. And I think oh, I'm on your side. I think uh, that's important to, because there are kids that don't have the means but have the skill. Definitely, definitely. And I think, I mean, for me, growing up out of Sydney, like growing up completely kind of isolated in the, in the mountains, yeah. and just doing my own thing, yeah. I would love to have had an opportunity. Kind of do that, you know, to be able to post stuff that I was working on yeah. to get feedback on what was happening. Well, you did the other day with your, you had a student didn't rock up for Oh, yeah, 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 exactly. I just put the camera there, I'll play some drops yeah. for a half hour. Yeah. And well, because it was just a situation where I thought, like, I was recording it really for myself yeah. to begin with, and I just thought, oh, just chuck it on my Facebook. I didn't even think anything of it. Yeah, yeah. Do you know, it was yeah. just like, oh, well, this is what I'm up to. Viral, man. Yeah, yeah no, it's, 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 <laughs> you know, it's kind of funny, but. The other thing about that is, for me, like, I always thought, I had this conversation with Gordon Rittmeister a few yeah. weeks ago, chatting on the phone, and it's always difficult to present, like, you take, you know, a lifetime worth of practice and work, and then you, you sit on a stage in a clinic or something or in a gig, and that's your opportunity to then funnel all of that work. To date to that yeah. moment in time, you know? And then that becomes judged based on how you perform. Yeah. Now the problem is that part of that filtering is psychological and emotional. Yeah. And so from my point of view, I get so nervous. Yeah. It, and so th there's, there's lots of blocking You're getting nervous? Oh yeah. Of that task? Oh no, so this that's stuff's easy. easy. Yeah, right. You know, but from the point of view of when, when it's, yeah, when it's it, that kind of plan. Um, but when you get to sit in your room and yeah. play to your happy yeah. and then post it, yeah. you get to kind of bypass all of that. Yeah. Okay. You get to present whatever, you know, put your best foot forward. Yeah. Yeah. You've got the opportunity to post or not post. Yeah. 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 You post it. Exactly. Thanks yeah. very much. That well, it was still rubbish. Yeah. <laughs> at the end of it, I was <laughs> going, oh, yeah. that was You needed crap. three camera angles. And no, no. <laughs> I mean, you know, it took a lot for me to actually hit go because yeah. generally, you know, yeah, cool, cool. All right, finally, if you're able, this is a big one, this is the biggest question you'll ever have to oh, answer. Okay. If you were able to implement one thing to improve the music industry, what would it be? If you could change the, the music industry. Return of benefactors, like in the Renaissance period. Right. Um, <laughs> so, you know. Thank and, you very much. <laughs> and, 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 and painted like Michelangelo mm -hmm. had the Medici family yeah. to back him. Right. So they paid for his living. Paid for his lifestyle, that, you know, like just even Beethoven. You look at that situation where, even though he had to do a lot of political work, you know, to keep that happening, to keep the money rolling in. Yeah. Basically, his way was paid because he was an artist, yeah. and so it would be incredible to have benefactors. Yeah, and I think you know yeah. that, that I'd be happy to see the return. Is there yeah. enough people on the planet now? We have so many musicians, particularly the the social media musicians. Trying to find enough benefactors to well, that. it's interesting because <laughs> you look at those those sites where you're raising funds for projects. That's exactly what that is. Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. We're on our way. Good. But it's a matter of whether or not you can take your you know have enough energy to self promote yeah. to find yeah. those individual people to donate. Perfect. But yeah, it's it simple is. It simple is. Answer, yeah. You know? it's, well, you know, I've I've had the opportunity to um, to be part of the Dave Wickle pledge. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, cool. I'm part of that, and I get the updates. There you go. I, do. Yeah, I love it. I, mean, it, it, I, get, I think he gets to do thing. his thing. That's exactly right. Amazing. And, and think, if you put something on Foswell or Kickstart, dude, I'm all over that. Oh. You know, my wallet's here. Yeah. Yeah. Take look, it look, I think the thing is that that, that does that make sense because it's difficult as an artist to make a living and to have enough time and energy left. Yeah. To be expressive and to, to work on that. Chris. Yeah, exactly. Of course, because otherwise the, the energy gets dispersed and dissipated into the other things you have to do in order to actually function. Yeah, you know, it's first world problems, really. Yeah, it's whether or not you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to eat, I just want to play groove. Yeah, exactly. I don't want to do a double, exactly. triple paradiddle with my yeah. hands and my, yeah. you know, beatbox over the top and it's with time yeah. yeah. You know, if that's what you want to do, get it that. If someone wants to support that on social media, then more power to everyone. Awesome. Well, I'm looking forward to your show. 
I've seen you play the same gear here. Sorry, same band here. Yeah, yeah. About two years ago or so. Yeah. Great man. Just we make a simple job sound and look amazing and wow. the band performs and you know Yeah, yeah. So this is fortieth anniversary tour of Drake. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Have you been in the band for how long? Uh, eight years now. Okay. Yeah. Uh, since it started back up. Wow. That's great. That's it's good, man. I love it. How did you feel when you got the phone? Um, actually, when Todd rang, I was in the car with my wife and my kids, and, and uh, my wife answered, and then, you know, she, because I was driving, she said, it's Todd Hunter on the phone. And I just, you know, pulling the car over and grabbing the phone and yeah. you know, running <laughs> you know, 50 metres away from the kids. Because wow, yeah. it was chaos in the day, you know? yeah. and then played it very cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. No worries. Uh, so. Great man, well, that was just the last question I thought I'd throw in there. Yeah, yeah. Thanks Pete for coming out. You're welcome, yeah. I, I yeah, appreciated the opportunity, you know, I've, I got the opportunity to play a, uh, a drum clinic in Salisbury a week before you played. Oh yeah, right. Um, years and years ago, where yeah, I think you had, uh, I can't remember, you had an album out at the time? Yeah, it was probably the... Uh, oh, then the be, yeah, no, yeah. I think that was even later. Yeah. So, I did this clinic and it was great, I had a heap of people in the room and You've come in, you know, all Zildjian, all, you know, all yeah, promoed yeah, up yeah, to the eyeballs yeah, yeah. and it just blew me away, man. Oh, he's an amazing man and, you know, from that point of life, I'm going to interview this guy one day. You know, and you now I get to play some drums for you and, you know, the drum tech. And, Hell's yeah. Love it. So thanks again. Just hanging out. I appreciate it. Thanks. Uh, cheers. So I hope you enjoyed that little quick interview. There's plenty more online, so check out etimusic.com uh, for more. Thanks again. Cheers. Yeah.